onto the protein structures like histone. Okay, now let us talk about the cruciform DNA, the structure of cruciform DNA. Now, what do we mean by this cruciform DNA? Now, it is uh, normally uh, the inverted repeats, uh, as we can see in this picture. So here uh, we start from the DNA. For example, from here on we have T. So, so these highlight regions. Just focus on these highlight regions. We have G A A C G T C C, and again uh, we are having G G A. Uh, so G G A. So that means this is not a mirror repeat, not either a direct repeat sequences. But what happens if we consider, if we look at really closely, then you can find this G A A G G T C C, and the opposite side C C T uh, G G C A A G. That means if we place a mirror. But uh, up to looking at this point, if we place a mirror in the opposite strand, we can find a mirror's repeat for this for for this sequence. That means we are talking about a palindromic sequence in this case. So in this case, we are having what is called a palindromic sequence. As you know, palindromic sequences are uh, the inverted sequences of mirror repeat in uh, in uh, the opposite strands, as you can see. So these are the palindromic sequences, and presence of these palindromic sequences will change, uh, will help this uh, DNA to make a structure which is called this, which is looks like this cross. That's why it is called the cruciform DNA. Now in this case, how the cruciform DNA is being formed is uh, due to the presence of uh, gentle heat to disrupt the hydrogen bonds. So the first thing we have to do to make this cruciform DNA is to disrupt the structure of hydrogen bond, disrupt the interaction between uh, the double strands of DNA to to make uh, to deal to omit these hydrogen bonds uh, after deleting these hydrogen bonds we have a chance or or uh, th so this this parti particular uh, both of the strands become loosened with each other and uh, up to few of the sequences or few regions uh, they are linked with each other but most of the part they are free so these regions where you can see CT and all these regions have a tendency to bind with to bind with uh, its uh, complementary sequence that we can find in the opposite side. Due to the presence of this palindromic sequence in, in uh, two separate regions, it has a tendency to stick things together like Velcro. Okay, so it sticks together like a Velcro and make a bond like that. But we can see also, in, uh, because of the presence of this gap, which is not made up with any repeated sequence or palindromic sequences, this gap, uh, as, as a result of the... Um, uh, result of this hydrogen uh, dis bonding disruption, uh, this part of the region will stop to make hydrogen bonds between them. So they'll bulge out uh, to make uh, this structure like a bulbs like that in the end of this cruciform DNA. That gives us characteristics loop-like structure in both of the ends. But in other ends, we have the simple structure. So what happens again? Let me consider. So all these hydrogen bonds are disrupted, and what happens? This red part will bind with this this blue part, as you can see here, and this red will bind with this blue, as you can see here, which is light in color. And what happens? These regions will be will form this part and this region will form this part so that's why that's how the cruciform DNA is being formed now cruciform structures are very important at the origin of DNA replication we can find more and more cruciform uh, structures in the start point of DNA replication in mammalian cells and have been shown to recruit different types of proteins new types of proteins which are called cruciform binding protein uh, to start the replication process Okay, now we can find this cruciform DNA uh, near positive control regions of a gene at the origin of DNA replication. So that's why the importance of having this cruciform DNA at the starting point of DNA replication is really, really important. So we, fi we can find this cruciform DNA at the beginning of DNA replication and it will, it will uh, recruit some of the proteins which are called the DNA cruciform binding protein it, which will in turn bind to the cruciform DNA and finally helps this DNA to be, uh, to be replicated properly. Okay, so that's the function of cruciform DNA. Now, here are some interesting facts about the cruciform DNA and that this existence of inverted repeats of this double-stranded DNA is not necessary, uh, but uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it is necessary, but it is not a sufficient condition to form this cruciform. There are other conditions to be maintained that the presence of this palindromic sequence is very, very important. And, uh, and those palindromic sequences uh, have to be separated uh, by uh, using 
some uh, stretches of uh, I mean uh, some stretches of the nucleotides okay now in a relaxed DNA cruciforms are not likely to form because the linear DNA accommodated more hydrogen bonded stacked base pairs than the cruciform structures that's why you can find in normal times we cannot find uh, cruciform DNA in relaxed DNA so we can uh, th this kind of formation of cruciform DNA is generated uh, just before the production of more and more DNA from the existing DNA that means at the time time of replication that means at the beginning of cell division cycle now unwinding uh, so another important thing is the formation of cruciform structure is not favored at the dna regions that consist of mirror repeats so we, we cannot find this cruciform at the direct mirror repeats because such structures would be constructed from parallel rather than anti parallel dna strands and we need uh, the, the this kind of mirror repeats on the anti parallel strands uh, that means we need the palindromic sequence for making this cruciform if we we are having only mirror regions or mirror sequences uh, of uh, nucleotides then uh, it is not pro the probable way that they will interact and form this kind of cruciform DNA okay now uh, let us move on to 